Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. What's up, everybody? Hey, man. So it's that time again. I actually got up and put pants on again for you guys on a Saturday night. So I hope we all appreciate that. <laughs> hope everybody's doing good. <clears throat> Oh man, let's see who all's out here tonight. We got Brandon out here. How you doing, Chad? Nikki, good to see you, Mr. Jim Hill. I mean, Mutter. Hi, Mutter. Cyrus is in. Happy holidays to you as well. Oh yeah, yeah. You you guys are gonna love this one. This is a gorgeous friggin' animal beyond belief. If you look right up here, you'll see there's a new temporary enclosure up there. Um, this will be a good one. Sam, how you doing? Greg is here. Our friend, Christine. Hey, Christine, by the way, I heard back from the uh, guys from, or the doctor from the uh, genetic. God, what is it? It's the, I don't remember the name right off the top of my head. Um, but they're the ones that do the genetic testing on the snake skins and stuff like that. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna be doing a talk on here at some point as well. So, and also another reptile rescue out in Raleigh that I started talking to today. <clears throat> that should be a lot of fun. Nicole, how are you? No, no, no. Yeah, we've got a we've got a place called City Barbecue that I go to out here all the time. Awesome. Kathy, good evening. Izzy, Merry Christmas to you as well. We got Ruth made it. Good to see you. Heidi is in the house. Hello, good to see you. Laura's in. Joe is in. Mr. or Mrs. Lockwood. I should know that, but I don't. So, Aubrey, hey, buddy, how you doing, man? Long time no see. Oh, Carla's made it. How you doing, man? We got a lot of folks in here tonight. This is good to see. Good to see. That's all you got to do, man. That's all you got to do is say something about a new animal, and everybody crawls out of the woodwork. There you go. Thank you very much. I don't worry too much about pronouns, but Mr. and Miss, Mrs. Are, are pretty important to get right. <laughs> hey, Chris, how's it going? You're thinking about getting you a jungle carpet python. What do you need to know? That they're freaking amazing. Carpet pythons are, are the, the bomb diggity. I love mine. Um, matter of fact, we've got a little variant to talk about tonight, which should be really interesting. Erica, hey, hey, how you doing, Brian? Yes, indeed. We need more of them. I just spent all of my freaking internet money on uh, the feeders and recording equipment today, so <laughs> I had to get some. Um, I had to get a wireless microphone set, uh, some lav mics, so that when I'm doing stuff like that reptile show that we did, I don't have the uh, the shotgun mic missing half of what I say. Camera tracking is on. What do I see? Oh, <laughs> that's I guess that's actually showing up in there, isn't it? Nice. Let's see, come on. Why are you gonna stop? Not stop. Where you at? Come on. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to play with this for a minute because that's gonna get old really quick. You stop. Get off of there. That didn't do it. Hey, now you guys can see. Let's see. Let me get this off of here. Um, damn. 
I have no idea how I'm going to get this off of there. And this is going to get annoying. I didn't even realize it because I'm so used to seeing all this weirdness over here. So we might, you guys might just have to deal with the damn autofocus tracking because I really don't want to, uh, I'll tell you what, we'll do it like this. Where are we at? Okay, bear with me. If something goes crazy, I may have to change some stuff. Let's see. You're still going to friggin' show up, huh? We. Da, 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 da. Yeah, you get to see all the crazy modes that my camera goes through. Ah. Let's see. And I don't know where the option is to take that off. That's kind of crazy. Hmm. Oh, well, let me keep on reading here for a second. We may just have to deal with the Terminator stuff just for tonight because I'm not entirely sure how to get that off of there. I was having some issues getting this thing to pick up earlier, so I had to go in there and tweak some stuff. And um, it, I think it has a lot to do with the capture card because I'm running this thing through an HDI, HDMI cable to the PC. And it's um, really a pain in the butt. So, oh, let's see. Well, I'm just going to ignore it. You guys can ignore it too. It's just going to look absolutely funny. <laughs> oh, bills go up now. Yeah, Tegus are they're eaters. That is faux show. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? At least y'all know where my eye is going to be for this episode. Uh, all right. Donna is here. Good to see you. See, I went. Hey, hey, Brandon. 40 people. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm doing the cyborg thing here. So that means you got to hit the like button. That's just standard YouTube stuff. Hey, Brian, good to see you, man. Run through here. Chad is asking if the China Hut. Yes, that is the Sri Lankans enclosure. Um, he lives in there. He tends to stay right about there on that top platform where he's at right now. Um, so, yeah, that's that's and that's another one that I can't wait to. Uh, um make for this next snake Let's see what i miss okay i think yeah i know i've got to figure out that's gonna that's gonna annoy the hell out of me i gotta figure out how to get that off there let me do one more thing real quick <clears throat> and i am gonna be holding a snake in just a second let me Try one more thing and see if I can't figure out where this thing is. Let's see if that'll do it. It might screw up my focus. Okay, that wasn't it. That just... I'm going to keep that on. Do, 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 should be display, display, anchor, display, yeah, 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 yeah. Where we at? Okay, that's not it either. I'm making one lap through here real quick. And if, uh, I don't figure it out, then we're just gonna have to roll with it. So level shutter function. Da, 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 da. I know that's not it. I know that's not it. <laughs> All right. 
See, this thing, I have got the option on here to show the information on the screen, and it should not be doing that. Ah, see? There I go. Hmm. All right. All right. Well, anyway, we're just going to have to deal with that. I guess I will uh, fix that at a later time. <laughs> now you guys get to see what all the, and if there's any of you guys out there that are um, um, camera geniuses and you just happen to see an option that fixes this, then let me know. Otherwise, everybody just going to aim. Let's see. <laughs> hey Greg, thank you so much, sir. Absolutely appreciate all of those. It's funny, every time you get a little bit extra money, it's like, okay, well, now I need this and this and this and this, and it's poof, it's gone. Ah. Uh, all right, let me see. John, hey, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, John, you'll notice for some reason I've unable to figure out how to get the tracking indicator off of my phone tonight. So, but anyway, uh, enough of worrying about that stuff. Um, Chris is asking where I got the cup at. That's off of Amazon. It's stupid expensive. It's like 40, 50 bucks or something like that. But it's well worth it, and it's really heavy. You could fight with it if you really had to. It's awesome. Uh, uh, super villain vibes. Yeah. That's what I go for. <laughs> yeah, if you guys haven't checked out John's channel either, man, John does some pretty good stuff. It's Tipping Scales on YouTube. Make sure you're going over there and checking it out. Oh, uh, let's see. Tank sizes for a male carpet python. You're looking at like a six to eight foot snake. Um, the thing about carpets, I keep mine in an enclosure real similar to this because they really like the vertical space. Mine just climbs like there's no tomorrow. So, you know, you, you could do a six, a six foot long. You could put them in an eight foot long. But um yeah, I'd recommend doing something that's, you know, between four to six foot that they've got a lot of vertical space to climb. At least give them like, you know, four foot or something up there to where they can get up and get into the branches and all that stuff. So, and I'm sure there's a lot of other recommendations too. I got a lot of a lot of other keepers in the chat um, who can uh, who can chime in on that too. It's really hard to say. You can't go well. What what type of enclosure is right for this species because. You know, it's just like a reticulated python. I've got my little reticulated python up there that's in a four-footer, but that's not right for a retic once they get a few years old and she's, you know, 15, 20 feet long. So anyhow, first thing I wanted to hit on tonight is there is a, there's an alert, the U.S. ARC alert, if you guys haven't, uh, you haven't seen it yet, down Louisiana. I don't know exactly um, what all the details are. I know that it has something to do with um, a pretty big ban. Um, I guess they've got some regulations down there that um, are like 12, snakes 12 foot and over or prohibited or something like that. Um, I think this is dropping it down to eight feet. So there's, um, and there's, there's a lot of other stuff involved in it. Go to the U.S. ARC website. I know that they've got comments open until, I think, March or something like that. So definitely go, go to the website and check that out. Um, I'm sure somebody in the chat here can link that real quick while I get ready to get this new mystery snake out. So I'm not going to tell everybody what it is. And we're going to see if you guys can look at it and give me your best guess. Going, girl. 
be nice. Hey, sweet girl. We gotta get you in a bigger enclosure. I don't even like working in this tiny thing. Come on. Come on. Come on, sweetness. Now you guys are allowed to laugh if I get bit. I haven't had a whole lot of time with her. We don't know each other really well yet. Uh, cool. Thank you for putting the US Arc link in there. We definitely need that. Okay. So what do you guys think about this girl? You're half right, Chris. Got uh, this one right here is actually a hybrid. And you're going to notice a little bit different behavior than with, um, with a lot of other snakes. This is a Jaguar carpet green tree python hybrid. So it's a pretty rare snake. And you can see the, uh, the Jaguar. You can kind of see some of the, just a little bit of the um, uneasiness in her. Um, she's really kind of jerky, stuff like that. She's doing pretty good. But... You can see a little bit. The jaguar genes are kind of like the spider genes in uh, ball pythons. So they have a little bit of a detrimental effect. But so far, this girl has been really good to handle. And she's really unique. Kind of the backstory for her is she came. Oh, yeah, she's white. She's really white. Um yeah, but she came from someone who had taken ill and had to rehome their collection and came out to a friend of mine um, who was somebody that she trusted to uh, to find a good home for. Her. Um, and I kind of uh, I get contacted because I'm not a breeder. I'm not a flipper or nothing like that. You know, when when there's unique animals around that are looking for a home, they're all going into the educational stuff, you know? Um, so I'm pretty fortunate in that respect to, uh, come on, see? Yeah, see, she's really kind of jerky and stuff like that. Um, it's a whole lot different. You can tell that her mind works differently than, you know, say the retics or something like that. She's just really all over the place. And I'm sure a lot of that has to do with the, uh, with the new environment and with, you know, everything changing, getting all this attention and all this stuff right now. And she may end up calming down and getting over some of that stuff, but. So, yeah. Is this not... There you go. Really good shot of her face there. Is that not one of the prettiest snakes you've ever seen in your life? So, yeah, so she's going to be she's going to be getting a enclosure kind of similar to the uh to the China Hutch back there. A um, little bit bigger. She's going to go in one probably closer to the size of my um of my boa. So, but you can, one thing that's really different about her is the whole, and I, it's really hard to explain when, when you've handled snakes for so long, so many different ones, you get a feel for their movements and you can kind of tell, 
you know, you, you can tell what their frame of mind is by how tense their muscles are, how they move and things like that. And you can just feel different. You know, this, this, this one feels different than any of the other ones that I've got because you can tell she's kind of got a unique, ah, come on. It's just really erratic. You know, like if you've got a retake and they're moving really quick, you can tell they're hanging on and they're trying to get to something all at the same time. And she is just kind of wanting to move. And it's almost like she doesn't have complete control of everything all at once. But she hasn't shown any signs of aggression at all. She just kind of want to do her own thing, ain't you? It's okay. Have fun. So, yeah, this was, um, she's going to be a really unique, really unique educational animal. And when we end up getting moved and I get my new thing set up, I want to have, you know, her and my jungle carpet and my green tree python all set up in similar enclosures right next to each other. So that'll be kind of cool. Um, you can kind of see one of each species and then the, uh, and then the hybrid. So. Yeah, she's a pretty girl. It is for sure. But you've also, you know, it's really a good example too. You hear people talking about the jag gene and the spider gene and all that. And um, I don't know, man. It's, this is my first time working with a jag. This is going to be, so I'm going to have some time, you know, really kind of getting to see how her demeanor changes and, and um see how she is but i've always been kind of skeptical of breeding in those genes that give them a bit of a disability um yeah there's so many other morphs that can uh they can get just as attractive without being debilitating in any way to the snake so we'll see how she does But in all reality, I mean, she's doing she's doing really well. Perfectly healthy, as far as I can tell. She just got a little bit of that sway to her, but we'll get her happy. It's okay. Come on. <laughs> all right. Let me get her back and let her relax now. But the cool thing is about her is that, um, I mean, even going in and, and taking her out and stuff like that, she doesn't have any any sign of, of uh, defensiveness or anything with me. She's really, really easy to work with. So let me run back through here. I was too busy watching her to follow up with the, uh, with the chat. So uh, there we go. Oh, where are we at? Where are we at? Yeah. Let's see. Where are we at? Where are we at? Asking if the Jag Morphs have it. See, I've got to look into it. Um, I just found out about her a couple days ago. And I haven't really done a whole lot of research. Um, you know, like I say, you know, everybody's got their own opinions about hybrids and stuff like that. But from my perspective, I'm just, I'm taking in an animal. 
and you know she's going to be like i said she's going to be a good good example from an educational standpoint of i mean one if she didn't have that that jag wobble to her um that would be a perfectly normal you know um completely viable hybrid i i think she's freaking gorgeous um so you can see that hybridizing carpets and, and green tree pythons that's you know it gives you a viable healthy animal uh you just got to stay away from that jag gene so oh let's see yeah those head markings are pretty awesome Uh. <laughs> Chad was asking for a GP that uh, my green tree python likes me too much, man. If I get another one, then I got to start all over again socializing them. <laughs> hey, first time. Hey, man, how you doing? You must be an air traffic controller. 75 foot tower. That sounds about right. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, see, I haven't studied enough of it. I'll be sure to look into that. Um, I, I know it's been a while now, but I remember hearing some studies on how the uh, spider gene acts and, um, and how similar the jag gene is to it. But it's just like anything else, as you start with a new animal, now, uh, hmm. From my perspective, I've just got some uh, um, some things to learn about the specifics about those, which is good. Looks pretty long. Surely you've seen my 16-foot retics. That's not a long snake. She's going to eat the same thing the other ones does, rats and small rabbits and quail and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah i'm only i'm only slightly scientifically inclined i'm sure i'm going to use a lot of those words wrong <laughs> yeah i appreciate that aubrey and um yeah, Aubrey, Aubrey is a huge help to me, too. Um, a couple of the animals. As a matter of fact, for you guys that have been keeping up with the Sri Lankan Sil Silent Bob, um, he came from Aubrey. Um, and that was really successful, having him out. He got really popular, and a lot of people learned a lot, a lot from him. So that was, that was really cool. Uh, there we go. What precautions do I take for fires? I've got breakers. There's only so many precautions you can take for them. Um, yeah, you, know, you got to plug the stuff in and you don't overload breakers. Um, the one mistake that some people will use is they'll think just because you've got, you know, three different plugs, as long as you're plugging into you know, spreading it through all of them. All of those plugs are probably more likely than not on the same breaker, stuff like that. I mean, actually, Aubrey's the electrician. He'd be the uh, he'd be the subject matter expert on that stuff. But uh, one thing I pay attention to is like on my space heater, I don't let the electrical wires get coiled up and lay on top of each other because they will get warm. And if something happens and they end up going through the insulation, they can short out. But I mean, you just, it's just common sense. Same thing with uh, Christmas lights. So. <laughs> I'm glad I could be of help, my friend. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I'm probably way far behind. Oh, wait. No, I think I've caught up. 
Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, man. Natural, uh, natural disaster stuff with reptiles just scares me to death. So, hey, Phil. Good evening. How you doing? Yep. Yeah, those wires on the space heaters. Those are, you know, stuff like that's probably your biggest fire hazard. Um, yeah, your radiant heat panels and stuff like that are designed to to handle the load that's on it um, and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah, putting in for the good stuff. <clears throat> uh, so that's the new kid. And like I said, I've got some stuff I need to learn about specifics about um, about the JAG gene and stuff like that. So, uh, Oh, let's see. See if I can catch up. I had like 15 different things to talk about here. Um, let's see. So we hit the hit the US ARC thing. Um, make sure that all you guys are going and checking that out. Um, this is one of those things. You know, it's just like anything else. When we start talking about Florida and the bad reptile laws down there, they'll seep over they start you know georgia starts picking up the torch and running with it now louisiana's got some you know matter of fact let me see here um i'm gonna pull up the us arc page real quick and just kind of go over that and any of you guys that are in north carolina that have your tegu permit um i think when the initial ones were were issued um, they all expired at the end of the year. So you guys will definitely, if you're in North Carolina and you got a Tegu permit, look at it. Don't forget to renew it. I just remembered to check mine today and I've got to, uh, I've got to get that renewed next week. So let me share this screen real quick. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Uh, what do we want? We want that. Ah, uh, my little square around my eye was gone for a second. I thought that it was, thought that it was gone. Uh, let's see. So I'm not going to go through and read all of this stuff. You guys can do that on your own. Um, they've got the entire document right here. They got the link for it. Um, one of the main things, and this this is kind of one of the things that shows that the state of Louisiana is going to be full of shit is they're talking about having no known impact on small businesses. So any honest person in that state legislature or commissioner, whoever the hell it is, um, needs to stand up and acknowledge that. Um, there's stuff in there about venomous. Uh, some of the stuff, like I said, it currently applied to snakes over 12 feet, and they're reducing that to eight. <clears throat> you can get eight-foot rat snakes, man. So that's just, that's just stupid. Um, let's see. Importation, obsession, credit, person. Uh, there was a couple things in here that kind of stood out to me earlier. I mean, like I said, I haven't read all of this stuff because I've been going 100 miles an hour. All these species will be banned. Oh, wow. Tegu's Nile Monitor, Savannah Monitor, Green Monitor, Brown and Knolls, really? Burmese Pythons, uh, Bub, 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 Boom Slangs, yeah, I don't have any of those. Uh, stupid Tree Frog. I don't see, uh, I don't see reticulated pythons on there. That's a good thing. It looks like berms are the only real big constrictors that they're banning entirely. But, uh, Restricted to possess with a permit. You can see all that stuff. So, yeah, see, this is the cool thing, too. If you guys aren't members of US ARC, um, I strongly suggest you get that way pretty quick. Um, 
you can you can get on here and get a membership for us arc for 40 bucks a year it's not a big deal at all but you can see the level of detail that these guys go into when when they're putting out alerts and when there's bad legislation proposals and things like that um, they are really all over this stuff and the us arc is saying that you guys need to get out and generate mail and letters and stuff like that then um, by all means pay attention to it because <clears throat> it is definitely definitely necessary um, and for anybody that that kind of asks whether or not it works um, you can look at the situation that happened down in Florida with the um, with the Holy Thursday massacre thing and U.S. ARC and the reptile community made a huge impact on that situation. Um, it's not perfect, but we were able to get them to put a moratorium on, on um, euthanizing any animals that they found, unless it was something where it was hit by a car and, and you know, the end, end of suffering type thing. They call it exigent circumstances. Um, of course, they screwed that up a couple months ago, a few months ago, something like that with a white throat monitor that they just hauled off and, and euthanized. But, um, you know, it is so much better than what it was. And when U.S. Arc Florida jumped on them about that white throat monitor, at least they're acknowledging that it was wrong. And he's escalating his order on it because first it was just a, a verbal order saying that we're going to halt all killing of animals. Um, so now my understanding from talking with Daniel is that he's, um, he's planning on putting it in as an actual written policy. So hope for the best, but the, um, the big thing. And when I was talking with Daniel from USR a couple of months ago about this, I keep meaning to have him on, but like everything else, man, we're all so busy. We never seem to meet in the middle anywhere. Um, finally getting on with the guys from the retake lounge here at 11 o'clock tonight to record an episode for them. Um, just cause like I said, it takes months to make all of this stuff happen because we got so much stuff going on, but, um, neither here nor there. Um, the whole point of that rambling that I was doing there was, um, just like with Florida, if we use that as an example, um, if we get out and we get sensible communications to these people and a lot of them talking about what businesses are going to be impacted, get some actually educated people out there, um, giving their suggestions on maybe how some of these, these restrictions can be loosened. Um, yeah, that, it really does make a difference. Um, after, after that uh, episode down in Florida, you know, FWC from all accounts from Daniel is that they've been cooperating with us. They've been listening to us. The director has been going out to reptile expos and meeting the breeders and, and all kinds of stuff, trying to find a good common ground out there and start working together on stuff. So, which is why I haven't put out any more videos talking about hurrying up and, and slamming them because they killed that monitor lizard. You know, people screw up. Uh, sometimes you just got to go, okay, well, let's fix that and, and not screw up the relationship because one person made a bad call. So they do have a lot of people working for them, and some of them aren't the, uh, aren't the most honorable. But hey, Tam, how you doing? Oh, let's see. Uh, no, this these changes, Sam, they haven't already changed it. This is part of the proposal. They're hearing public comments on it um, through March, I think. So, um, so this is still something that we're that we're working on. So, I mean, we're still pretty lucky out here in North Carolina. And then I hope it stays that way. Man, hey, I really appreciate that, John. Yeah, one of these days, man. I'm going to have to have you on the channel one of these days if you can ever get off work. 
I am free generally after four o'clock during the weekend and all weekend. So anytime you want to get together and do something and you decide to take some time off work, you just let me know. Hey, hey Merry Christmas to you as well. Ah, there we go again. Come on now. Work with me here. Did I hit my hour? No, not yet. I know this thing will cut off after an hour too. This little, this little tracking box is annoying the hell out of me. I can tell you what I'm going to be spending the rest of my time off doing. is going to be figuring out how to get that little damn box off of my eye. <laughs> Uh, outstanding man outstanding we need everybody i mean that should be that should be all part of keeping reptiles if you keep reptiles get a membership renew it every year do as much as you can i was into tarantulas my last tarantula i had was a goliath bird eater female and i loved that thing although she hated me I think she's the only one that really hated me as much as my female prairie dog does. Um, but yeah, I ended up losing her to a bad molt. But uh, at some point, like I said, when we get moved and we get more space, I have more room to work with and all that. Um, we are going to we're going to be expanding habitats and species. Um, I've got some really cool ideas for enclosures for my big retics. That are going to make them very happy, especially as active as they can be. Um, I really want to do some, do up some more cool arboreal stuff, like I've got for the uh, for the Sri Lankan. Um, want to do up another monitor lizard enclosure, at least one. Because I need to get an Asian water monitor. It doesn't hate me. Niles doesn't hate me. He's just he's kind of his own boss. So, hey Gene, how you doing tonight? Oh, we got really. See, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, I th I think you should need a permit to get an alligator or a crocodile. They're not the uh, they're not the safest and easiest animals to work with. I got no problem with that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm just kind of, I know you guys, I'm just kind of reading through the, reading through the uh, chats here. Bob is doing great. I'll probably get him out in a second. Yeah, no, I just, I just went through there looking at all the settings and there is a damn button in here that pulls the, I don't know. I've got to go. I think what I'm going to do is just do a full factory reset on this thing because I've tweaked so much stuff as I've been learning it. Um, I'm sure there's there's something buried in there that I tweak, and I could start hitting buttons, but I'd probably turn it off, and and that would suck. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. See, that's Niles isn't aggressive. He's enthusiastic. It's exactly what he was. Yeah, we'll get it sorted out, Christina. I just don't want to do it right now because because if I screw something up and then you guys have to spend 15 minutes watching me, uh, Watching me unfork my camera. <laughs> oh, man. There's also another reptile rescue out here in Raleigh that um, I started talking to as well that we may be able to start getting involved with some of the uh, um, educational stuff, too. Okay, I'll get Bob out real quick because I've been kind of leaving him alone a little bit, letting him do his own thing. So we'll see if he's going to bite me or not. 
Here you go, bud. Big shot at me. It's okay. So Mr. Bob is doing good. He didn't even try and bite me coming out of the enclosure. Unlike, uh, Unlike yesterday when I took him out, I think I went in too quick. I must have woke him up and said, would you put that tongue back in there? Stop that. Um, come on, bud. Come on. He's a little angry tonight. But he typically gets over it pretty quick. <laughs> It is really cool though that he doesn't uh doesn't really take any swings at me anymore. It's not all that common for him to just barely stick that tongue out of his mouth and let me know that he's not happy about being out, but uh he does good. And we're still struggling to get him to eat on his own. He is just his personality is uh is something else but we're keeping him healthy i've got a really good feeling that once he does finally relax and we're not having such a hard time with eating and stuff like that and he's he's a little bit more relaxed about food because right now um anytime i offer him anything it's all defensive strikes and if i drop it he just ignores it so but he's been shedding and being assist fed and everything. So he's good. We just got to work on his little attitude still. A little bit of it. But he does pretty good. And he has learned to get used to the uh, the microphone. He hasn't been attacking that the last couple times either. So that makes me happy. And sometimes it takes him a little longer to come around. See. Yeah, I haven't tried to give him live because I don't feed live. Uh, I'm not going to. All my animals eat frozen thawed. So it's not it's not whether the animal is alive or dead. It's this particular animal is not comfortable. He came from a different environment than the one he's in now. It's his environment that's causing him to not eat, not the prey item. Because before he came to me, he was just slamming frozen thawed like it was nothing. Regular eater, never any problem. But he's coming into a different environment here, and he's just not comfortable. So I've got to work on getting him comfortable and getting him feeling secure in order to get him eating again. Um, yeah, I mean, too many people jump over to live when it's just not necessary. And live isn't live or dead isn't the issue. There's another issue. So, but anyway, anyway, we've got uh, we've got pet rats and stuff here too. So, I don't like seeing things suffer needlessly, unless it's a person that's got it coming. I've got two different levels of mo morality for uh, one for animals and one for people. And the animals deserve a lot better in most cases. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've, man, there's been times I've, I've come through here. I've had a mouse, a rat, and a quail, and a rabbit. And I'm all there. Dropped them all in there. Left them alone. You didn't touch any of them. So it's just going to, it's just going to take time. So, like I said, my main concern is, you know, he's healthy. I make sure that I assist feed him enough to where he doesn't 
you know, start really losing weight or anything like that. And uh, I just do it infrequently enough to where I know that he's hungry already. And if he's not eating, then, um, then we'll get a meal down him. But it's the craziest thing, though, because he, uh, he like normally assist feeding and stuff on a snake is, is an unpleasant experience for him. But he doesn't harbor any ill will towards me after those episodes at all. Uh, you know, I get a meal down him, leave him alone for a couple days, let him digest it. And uh, it doesn't affect our relationship at all, which is really cool. Uh, this is one. Yeah, see, this is another thing that I had thought too, and I've tried this a couple times. Um, I have handled him and gotten him calmed down and then tried offering him food. <laughs> yep, I'm the same way. Let's see. Yeah, these guys, these guys are pretty rare. Um, I know there's not a lot of them out here um i understand somebody had told me that that somebody in the u.s recently had a clutch but it was my understanding that you're close to maybe 20 of them in the country there's not a lot there may be a little bit more so but he's still come a long ways we'll get him slamming food on his own again before too much longer. I can go longer than you can. You're going to have to give in sooner or later. And just start eating on your own. For like serious eat. <laughs> he is a pretty boy though. You say hi. Trying to get that focus to catch him. Oh, uh, Gerald, how you doing? Yeah, yeah, that's my understanding that these can't um, be sold across state lines. I'm not entirely sure why, but. Um, and see, that's Laura was asking if he was wild caught. I am not sure. Um. I'm guessing he probably was, but I mean, he's still so young. It's hard to say. Um, just because I'm having such a hard time getting him eaten on his own, I'm, I'm guessing he probably was wild caught. But I could be wrong. See, that's the that's the only bad thing about a lot of the animals that I have is I get them secondhand and so forth. I'm not getting them as babies from breeders or anything, so I don't have a, a complete history on them. You know. Like my male reticulated python, I got him when he was 12 feet long already. Uh, I think my female was five, six feet when I got her. Um, so a lot of this stuff I don't have a complete history on. But uh, we are getting some unique animals here. That is for sure. Uh, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, his uh, he is doing so good. I don't worry at all about having him draped around my neck anymore. A lot of times I'll, <laughs> yeah, Gerald, I know. I've been sitting here trying to ignore that the entire video because for some reason, when I was setting this thing up tonight, I did, I hit some kind of an option that, that has my tracking on. So it'll be off next time. But, uh, Oh, uh, let's see. <laughs> see, which is two different Indian hunts. Yeah, what the uh, what my understanding is, Chad, is that the um, um, Sri Lankans used to be considered just a locality Indian rock python. 
And since then, I think they have uh, made them their own species. So, yeah. Yeah, I know. That's what I was talking about. Damn eye tracking crap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and see, that's that's another reason why I, <clears throat> since I don't breed, and I adopt almost all of my animals. Um, I have devoted so little mental real estate to uh, morphs and genetics and that kind of stuff. So when I've got people sending me pictures and they're like, man, what, what's the morph of this ball python? I'm like, I have no idea. You're going to have to talk to a ball python breeder. Um, so I've got two ball pythons. One of them's a normal. One of them's a ghost, I guess. Um and that's the extent of my ball python morph knowledge. Oh, would you just relax? Just chill out. Just chill, buddy. Just chill. Yeah, see, this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about, man. When you take them from... When you take them from fighting you... Right out of the enclosure... And biting you 30 times before you get them to calm down... And I can pet her head, and she doesn't even try and run away from me. He doesn't try and run away from me. Got the fattest muscles up here, too. You can see the musculature on his head is just freaking amazing. And you can probably see how dense it is if I can get the camera to focus. Let me get over here. You see how much meat is on his head, man. I swear he's like a pit bull. That's the closest thing I can compare it to. Doing so good. Fed some. Yeah, Chad was asking if I've had a lot of experience with wild caught stuff. Um, I've had some. Um not an extremely large amount, but I have worked with some wild gods that are that are pretty spicy. That are definitely require you to be on point. <laughs> hmm. Oh, let me get through here. What are you doing? I know, right? Yeah. He's doing really good. Almost here a couple months ago, I almost had a another 12 or 14 foot retick, I think, that um, might have been a 14 or 16 foot that they was talking about that uh, nobody could handle. Uh, it was really, really defensive and scared. That I was going to take in, but ended up being the guy was just trying to find somebody to sell it to. Let's see what are you doing. Get over there. Because I'm really in a position. I mean, I <clears throat> I don't um I don't have a lot of space, but if I need to take something in just to make sure that it's got a home or if it's something that's going to be useful for educational purposes on the channel, um, I'll make room for it. Um, and I've been looking here for a long time to find somebody that's got a pretty spicy retake that's pretty good size. Because um, like when I was doing the handling videos with this guy, it's, it's no big deal letting him bite me 30 times because I can just ignore it. Whereas if you've got a, a 14, 16 foot snake, and it bites you 30 times, you're going to run out of blood before you guys make friends. So you got to handle them a little bit differently. Um, but I can't really do that with any of mine because they're so well behaved that I don't have to worry about them biting me. <laughs> but I would like to find me a big retic that's got the same attitude that this guy had when he first came to me. See, you can do all this stuff, but you won't eat on your own. Why? That's weird. It really is, just so you know. He's made friends with the microphone when he first came out. He would sit here and strike at the microphone all the time. Now he's not worried about it no more. <laughs> I 
Oh man, let's see. See if I've missed anything. I have not. I don't think so. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put him up. You guys got any last minute questions and stuff like that? By all means, throw them down there. Um, while I'm putting him away. Go home. Are you serious? Are you trying to come back out? <laughs> yeah, I uh, you guys can't see it because the freaking microphone's in the way. He doesn't want to go away. He's sitting here just resting his head on my hand. You should go chill out now. You earned it. You should drink a water. Yeah, see, that kind of stuff is just awesome. It's awesome to take an animal. Ah, from being absolutely terrified and then getting them to the point where they don't even want to go back to the enclosure anymore. Yeah. My other two over there are still sleeping. So. Yep, yeah, I'm getting ready to jump off here pretty soon too myself, sir. I'm going to get up and probably find me a midnight snack and make some fresh coffee so that I can get on with... Uh, Lucas and get this uh get this stuff knocked out for their episode tonight. Let's see. I don't think I missed anything. <laughs> hey, hey. How's it going, Jordan? Oh, no worries, man. You are going to have to jump back about 5 10 minutes into it. Maybe 10 or 15 minutes into it. I got the new girl out. Uh Y'all have to check her out. She's something else. So I was just getting ready to take my butt off of here and go do some stuff. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, Chloe, she's always ready to come out. I can, uh, matter of fact, she's just sitting in there in her water bowl right now. Let me go get her. I'll bring her out for a second. Hey, girl. Can you come say hi? Come say hi. Come ah. <sighs> she was in her water that's got a little substrate in it. And for those of you guys that don't know this one, this is uh, this is Chloe. She's my lavender retic, who is probably the sweetest snake on the planet. But I had to swap enclosures between her and my berm because the uh, <clears throat> the enclosure I had her in, there's a big enough gap at the doors to where she was sticking her head in there. Because every time she sees me, she wants to get out of the damn enclosure. Which is cool. You know, she hangs out with me a lot. And she's going to be a great ambassador, especially when she gets big. But you can kind of see on the top of her head, she was trying so much to get out of there. Come here, girl. Head down there. That. Come on. Yeah, she's got that little red line down the, down the top of her head right now. Because she was pushing on that thing so much. So... So now she's in a different enclosure that she can't do that in. Oh, yeah. This is one of those snakes. It's just, I, 
I'm so anxious to see her get big, you know. She's awesome when she's this small, but I can't wait until she gets Monty's size. You know, 16, 18 feet. This is going to be a majestic animal. And she's going to get a lot of attention at the educational events. So... Um, no, no, I don't think, I don't think we're doing it live. We might be, I don't know. I think we're recording it though. Um, like I said, um, we've been, we've been talking back and forth for months about getting together on something. Um, but we're just so busy. Our schedules never really line up. And I've done a couple with Kegan so far. Yeah. Yeah, she'll be okay. You can kind of see it a little bit. They do that, man. That's one thing about retics is they will get out and some of them. I'm fortunate that, you know, that's all it was with her. But she was just getting it right in the top of that door there. But that'll last a couple sheds and then you won't even know it was there. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Like I said, as far as I as far as I knew, it was all pre-recorded stuff. So we're gonna be talking about um educational programs is our topic tonight. So I don't know when it's gonna air, but just make sure you know you guys need to all be getting on uh, the retic lounge as well. Make sure you're supporting them. Uh those guys do some really good episodes and They've got really good cameras that they know how to shut off the eye tracking indicator on. So there's that too. Oh yeah, shit. I am going to have to get this figured out tonight because I can't be doing their episode with a damn, uh, with a damn tracking thing on here. So yeah, I'm going to have to do that. So yeah, it's 10 after nine. All right, guys, I'm going to jump off of here. I'm going to put her back. I'm going to continue to fight with this camera until I get this thing off of there so that they don't have to have this on their uh, on their episode when we do that. So it's good to talk to everybody again. I'll be putting out another video here in the next couple of days. I've got, you know, I don't go back to work till Wednesday and we don't really have anything going on for Christmas. So I'm going to put something out. I'll try and make it good. I'll think of a good topic. If you guys think of a good one, just shoot, hit me up on Facebook or something like that, Instagram, and let me know what you want to see. I'll put something. I'll put something out. Probably put two, maybe. We'll see what time permits as I go. So, anyway, guys, you have a good one. Don't forget, get subscribed to the US Arc. Get your membership. Um, check out the Retic Lounge. Make sure you subscribe there. And I know you guys already seen the thing about John and tipping scales. Look for that icon shoot him some love as well so you guys have a great holiday and i'll see you guys later we'll do this again next saturday so have a good night guys